are live on. We're on live on both. Hello. Both. Hello. Right. Hello. Okay, so. We're doing a live Q&A. Do you have a tech thing I got to do okay. on my computer? While you're so doing stall, that. Stall. I would like, whoa, dude, I don't know if you can hear that, but there was a giant thunderclap just outside of our house. So if this dies, you know why. <laughs> Because it you sounds don't. like Armageddon <laughs> is out there. It was really close. Yeah. So I, wonder... I wasn't going to do a magic trick, but the thunder stole my thunder. Oh, man. The da I don't know. Maybe like 35 and over is when the dad jokes just really start raining They're getting up. better the closer I get to 40. Like, you never answered my question earlier. Do you get them daily in your inbox? Or is it like an RFS feed? It's something that as a dad that is just... is. It's in our DNA, and the older you get, the more they start to just flow. Like I said, the closer I get to 40, the more the dad jokes just come naturally. So it's a gift, and you know, it's not something that you can work on. It is an innate talent that is just uh, for dads, and everyone wishes that they could be as funny as us. So we're gonna do a Q and A. Okay. Diet and exercise questions. So if you have any questions, let us know. Mm -hmm. Totally let us know. Okay. Because even if it's later and you're watching this not live, we will answer them on another Q&A. Yeah. And the comment on Facebook says, submit your questions for the next overrated, underrated video. And I can't remove it. It won't let me <laughs> change any of the settings. Oh, well. So if you do have a Q&A question, you can submit it now or you can message us and we'll either do an overrated, underrated series or just a general q a if it fits that topic a little bit more sounds good so let's get through this okay. i mean let's like get this rolling <laughs> okay so let's just start well then we've got a list here of diet and exercise questions let's kind of just alternate you want to go first sure so the first diet question is what are healthy fats okay so when when we say or i say healthy fats i'm talking about fats that are lower in saturated fat um, and higher in the unsaturated fat. So that's poly, mono, anything else? <laughs> Isn't that it? Isn't that it? Yeah. And, and, um, so a lot of our diet in the Western world is... Oh, there's trans fats, but those are trans not... Trans fats, yeah. Those are that's not, what I was thinking of. Not healthy. Uh, are full of saturated fats and those can, um, increase your inflammatory response in your body and they don't help with heart health and so countering what you're eating already with adding healthy fats that kind of help balance out those saturated fats are what we're talking about with healthy fats so what that means is anything with more poly or monosaturated fat than saturated fat when you look on a label you'll see them all listed out you want less saturated and more of the other ones some quick I'm going to give like a couple. doesn't mean you can't eat saturated fats, no. but you're probably already eating a lot of saturated fats. Like we, so. when it makes sense, we use avocado oil instead of butter. Yeah. We still use butter for some things like that's just non-negotiable in the house. But when we can, when it makes sense, like if I'm sauteing some things, I'll use avocado oil because that adds a different, a different fat to our diet and different nutritional profile. Yeah. So to summarize, I would say your advice is, just find some foods that have higher amounts of poly and unsaturated yeah. fats and maybe find ways to substitute out some of the saturated yeah. fats with that. Just look at, kind of start look, glancing at the ingredient label, what you're eating and say, like, oh, well, can I swap this for something that makes sense for my life, my family, my preferences, that's a little bit more healthy fat to find that balance. And that's a good place to start. Okay. First exercise question is what time of day is best to work out? This one's real easy because the answer is whatever time of day works for you. It does, sure. it does not matter. Yeah. There have been arguments about over like, or not arguments, but some people like to say that like, if you do stuff first thing in the morning without eating that, you'll burn more fat. It's not true. I could explain why if you really want to know, but <laughs> it's just, the point is it really doesn't matter. Whenever you're going to work out, whatever fits into your schedule best is going to help you be most consistent that's when you should do it because it will not make a difference as far as the results you get in the totally. long run. Yeah, yeah, if working out in the afternoon is when 
that works best for your schedule and you're actually going to show up and get it done, then you should do it in the afternoon versus trying to force yourself to be a morning workout. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, diet. How many fruits and veggies should I eat? I feel like that's almost a two-part question. Like, it is. Because there's fruits and there's veggies and some, I don't know. I'll let you answer it. Okay, veggies. I'll start with veggies because that's the easy one. Um, veggies, we should be getting anywhere between like minimum four, like fifth size servings of veggies a day and upwards of eight size servings of vegetables a day. And that's, that's any type of vegetable, you know, whether it's starchy or high in carbs, that's fine too, but just getting a balanced, colorful range of veggies throughout the day. I feel like everyone kind of knows like, okay, it's better to go for like the green leafy stuff but they don't necessarily realize like, yeah, corn is still a vegetable. So if you're supposed to have that many veggies, that can be really hard to do if you're just trying to cram in spinach, spinach. all There's only long. so much leafy greens you can eat in a day. Yeah, so the point is to eat more vegetables because most people are, most of us are not getting no. the four to eight fist size portions a day. So find just find ways to do it. And then you can get better at finding better choices too. Like. If all you're starting out with are the starchy things, fine. Then replace one of those eventually with some yeah. some spinach yeah. or broccoli or whatever. Awesome. Okay. Exercise question. Uh, should I lift weights for strength training? So I guess, in other words, what I'm assuming is being asked here is if I want to get stronger, is lifting weights necessary? Like, is that the thing to do? Um, uh, ultimately, the answer is no, you don't have to. Um, a lot of times I'll talk about how strength training should be what everyone kind of prioritizes as far as what is going to be most beneficial for most people most of the time is strength training. And I'll say lifting weights is part of that, but you can do other stuff. You can do body weight exercises. Um, resistance bands, stuff like that. What gets tricky with the body weight stuff is that it becomes much more difficult to uh, to progress. Like it's only gonna take you so far. And then once you get to a certain point, then you're gonna have to, you're gonna have a real hard time getting stronger unless you start doing some crazy, like I'm a gymnast or, you know, like hanging sideways from poles types of tricks, which are cool, but, probably not real practical for like the average parent like us at home who <laughs> just has 20 or 30 minutes to kill to get a workout done. <laughs> like that's not the type of thing. So for most people, lifting weights is actually probably the best thing you can do um, because it's just the easiest. You yeah. can you can real easy just grab a pair of weights and even if you're just at home, just if even if you just have a decent set of dumbbells, like that'll take you a long way. So does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally, okay. Next question for diet. Do I need to eat breakfast? Um, this is one another one of my, it depends. Um, so if breakfast, you really need to assess like if, if it's serving you. If eating breakfast is helping you um, make better choices the rest of the day, or if it's helping you power through a morning workout, or um, it's helping you get enough protein and veggies throughout the day, then then yeah, breakfast is something that you should incorporate. But if you're better off waiting a couple hours because you don't have much going on in the morning and uh, you feel fine and you're still able to make good decisions throughout the rest of the day, then maybe you don't need to eat breakfast and you can just have the same amount of meals but later on throughout the day. Um, there is no one way that works with every lifestyle, every person and there is no like one way, one way to do it. You just need to see, is it working for me? Is it serving me? Am I giving breakfast, getting me to my goals or not? And then go from there. Yeah, I would like to point out that there have, that I know there's at least one study, if not more, that has shown that a lot of people do better if they have some breakfast in the morning because then they're not starving. But not everyone's like that. There are a lot, we have a lot of clients who are just like, I don't want to eat in the morning. Yeah. So they're, so fine, wait till, 10, 11, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I just want to, I, the reason why I'm going to point that out is because I feel like sometimes people get so busy in the morning that they just skip it. Yeah. And then, yeah, it doesn't matter as far as like, it's not going to change anything about the your metabolism, how you're metabolizing foods or your biology. It's not going to slow down or speed anything up, but it might make a difference just for how you're feeling. Yeah. I will say that some people 
we'll start with us saying, yeah, I don't need to eat breakfast, but we, the more we get into it and the more patterns we see, adding breakfast actually helps them be more consistent with getting their um, different food it's in yeah. throughout the day and being more consistent with working on their goals. Doesn't mean waking up and sh shoveling food into your mouth. Yeah. Just eating something in the morning at mm -hmm. some point before it gets too Crazy. long. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so next exercise question. Does Pilates make my muscles longer? I know this is kind of a common question. People want to kind of get toned up. They want to feel toned they want their muscles to be longer, leaner, so not just getting bulky. I've never heard this one. Really? It's it's more common with women, but even even for guys like guys who don't want to like me, I'm not interested in being a bodybuilder and like just being this huge jacked dude. Um just would rather have more of an athletic, leaner, longer look. Um, and Pilates has been advertised to get you that look. And the truth is, it, it really won't make a difference. Your, your muscles are the shape that they are, <laughs> and you can't change that. What you can change is how much body fat you have. Um, and if you lose some of that, that's going to give you a leaner look. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual shape of your muscles is not going to change because you're doing a certain type of exercise other than if you are intentionally overeating and you want to make your muscles bigger you can do that but but the actual shape of it is not going to change just the size of it mm -hmm. so ultimately the question the answer to that question is no pilates will not make your muscles longer nothing will <laughs> you are the way you are <laughs> yep um, you can certainly change your body composition yeah. you can certainly change what you look like with a t-shirt on or in your swimming suit, but you can't change your muscle over, length. Your muscle length. You can't change your forearm. I'm a naturally <laughs> slender person. I will never be a big boxy person, no, even if I did gain a ton of muscle. So certain things you can't change and that's one yeah, of them. Totally. Okay, for you, we've got, should I avoid carbs? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, and I'm gonna say right off the bat, no. Avoiding carbs is generally not recommended. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of my clients are averse to carbs because we've kind of got it ingrained in us carbs are bad, but really what is should be more avoided is the processed carbs. The things that um are harder to say no to and easier to eat really fast like cake or donuts or breakfast muffins and pastries and uh those kinds of things. So, but definitely like one of the things we have our clients do is focus on making incorporating more quality carbs and being consistent with getting those in throughout the day. Yeah, I was gonna say, even the, the cake and donuts and stuff, it doesn't mean you should avoid it. Mm -hmm. It just means you shouldn't have it as frequently as yeah. what you do those other higher quality carbs. Is that all you wanna say on that? Yep. Okay, what can I do about muscle soreness? So this is a common one, especially for people who are um, more just getting into exercise and feeling like, oh my gosh, how can I keep stay consistent with this because I just feel awful. Mm. I guess there's two things I want to say about this. I think, don't hold me to that. <laughs> I'll try to keep it short though. One is that a lot of times people look for muscle soreness to say whether, whether the exercise they're doing is effective or not. And being sore is actually not a good indicator of, oh. of whether your workout is effective. And in fact, Mm, it's very, very different from person to person, but you should not be sore the more you exercise. Like the, the longer you've done it, the more consistent you are with it. Mm -hmm. You might get to a point where you literally are never sore again, and that's fine. That doesn't happen for everybody. Some people are a little bit sore all the time because they're exercising. But that's, so that's number one, is don't look for soreness as an indicator of success. Number two is if you're dealing with a lot of soreness, it probably has more to do with the uh, just the exercise program or lack thereof that you're doing. You're probably doing too much or taking on more than what you have been doing too quickly. Um, and so to make sure that you don't get too sore, you should build up. For, so like for our clients, a lot of times their first week of doing exercises is really pretty simple. I'll have them do maybe two sets of each exercise and I'll even then I'll say like, just use this as a practice thing. Don't worry about whether it's even super hard. This should be a relatively easy week. Get your body used to it. And then after that, you maybe you'll be a little sore, maybe not, but then the next week you can do more and your body will be used to it and you won't get as sore. 
as far as if like someone if if this question is about like asking about recovery like how do i if my muscles are sore right now what do i do about it there i um i won't get into all the different types of things that you could try because most of them are kind of worthless mm. um they i mean if if you found something that works for you that's awesome but for most people it's there's really not much you can do other than maybe taking ibuprofen which i'm not recommending that you do because i'm not your doctor and i don't want to tell you to take medicine um but but that's why i go back to what i said before which is that it's actually more important to just have a smart exercise program that's not going to make you sore in the first place if you're really sore right now recover get better and then exercise smarter yeah and if you don't know how get a good trainer mm -hmm. who can put it together for you yep totally um, we have time for one more question oh my gosh but so, we've got four more nope Maybe okay we just have to pick one really okay well we one. said which ones did we say we were gonna ask oh, you the, the breakfast one okay so the bees knees what can i do the the original question is what can i do if lunges hurt my knees so lunges i'm gonna just assume everyone kind of knows what those are should i not assume that it's where you, you take, be clear. It's where you take, you're standing, you take a large step forward, lunge forward onto the one leg, and then step back. That's one type of lunge. There's actually a whole bunch of different types of lunges. Um, you know and, what? Squats hurt my knees. Okay, so I'm going to bring up both of these things then okay. real quick. So, so I'm going to talk about lunges specifically. Um, reverse lunges tend to be most the most knee friendly type of lunge. That's when I'm having clients. We do lots of different lunges, but reverse lunges are one of the more common ones because I know that they're better for your knees. So if you're doing that forward lunge, step forward, step back, stop doing that if it bothers your knees. It might just be that you need to have someone take a look at your form and address it, and you'll be fine. Mm. But for now, just do a reverse lunge instead. You can. Google it, or really all it is, is instead of stepping forward, you're stepping backwards. You're still, your weight is still on the front leg. You're still working the front leg, but you're stepping backwards. It's going to take some pressure off the knee. So that's number one. Number two, as far as just knee pain in general, um, like you mentioned, squats hurt your knees. The answer to that is there is always another exercise that you can do. Just like what I just said with the lunges, forward lunges tend to bother people if they have knee issues reverse lunges not so much squats can be the same thing so there are alternatives to that where you can still do squats but like with megan i had her do spanish squats for a while where you um, put an exercise band around your knees so that it's pulling on the backs of your knees that can help um or it can just be something where you maybe you're going too low maybe you're putting too much pressure on the fronts of your toes um, so there's always different things you can do. It's, uh, I, I guess it's impossible to tell you for sure what you should try other than I would just encourage you to not be discouraged by if you have knee pain that you can't do leg exercises because you absolutely can. I mean, we've got clients, um, even older clients in their 60s and 70s who have had joint issues who where I just give them a different exercise or take a look at their form and say, do this instead, or say, don't go quite as low on this. And, and they are fine. Yeah. So, so there's always something you can yeah. do. The big takeaway is that just saying you have knee pain means you can't work out. is just a cop out. <laughs> I that's think not a cop out because knee, I mean, I want to recognize like that's, it's a real thing that nobody wants to work out if they're, no. if they're in but pain. But there's ways to work around it. So you're not in pain. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, just because you can't do a regular lunge doesn't mean that you can't find something. That it's a good still... excuse and a good reason to not do certain exercises, but it is not a valid reason to, to not exercise. Work out. Yeah. Because there's there is a solution. Yeah. And so if that's something you you need someone to just guide you on, that's something we can actually do. Something he's really good at doing is finding alternate exercises that aren't don't cause discomfort and can still continue to build muscle. All right, so I guess that's all we're doing today. If you've got other questions, leave them in the comments and we will answer them later. Yep. Or you can always message us too and we're happy to answer you personally. Mm -hmm. And we'll just keep the questions rolling in and we'll do these videos next time we have enough. Sound good? We did so good. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna turn these off. <laughs> See you guys.